Hey, Patty, you're on. Go for it. I'm on? Yeah, you're on. Give us a big, good intro. Uh, Welcome, friends and fans, to another edition of Galaxy Con. No, sorry, that's the other job. Welcome, (laughs) friends and fans, to another edition of The Legend of the Traveling TARDIS. Nothing to do with that other show we used to be on. Hi, I'm Patty Hawkins. I'm just uh, sitting in for today. Uh, Christian, this is your show. Come on out. You do your thing. Come on. All right, fine. Here we go. My name is Christian Basil. Years ago, I had an idea. I got myself a TARDIS. Took it to new places, met a lot of new people, took some great pictures, and talked Doctor Who. From Krypton Radio and the creators of the Hanging With web show, this is the legend of the traveling TARDIS. Join me on my latest adventures. And become part of the legend. And welcome fellow Whovians. Welcome back. For those of you just joining us again, welcome to the legend of the traveling TARDIS. My name is Christian Basil, and we've got a great panel for you tonight over here. Uh, Let me introduce the folks over here because we're going to be talking about the appearance of four very special and wonderful actors that will be appearing at GalaxyCon this weekend, which will be taking place, I believe their appearance, if I'm not mistaken, Patty, is going to be on the 13th? Uh, Yeah, it's going to be this coming, this is the summer 12th, uh, Saturday at noon. Gotcha. Noon Eastern time. Gotcha. So Saturday, December 12th, noon, check it out up there. Go to galaxycon.com. That's galaxycon.com. I can't talk today. Wow. (laughs) (laughs) And let me introduce the team uh, today. Wait a minute. Let me get a little beverage. And welcome, folks, to our holiday special. Of course, the traveling tallis, uh, TARDIS is a... I t- wow. <laughs> I'm going to try drink again, buddy. That, 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 not that kind of drink. Uh, it's not enough of that drink. <laughs> yeah, the traveling TARDIS is wearing his nice little Santa <laughs> beanie for... For, uh, our for sooth, sooth, the TARDIS. <laughs> TARDIS. <laughs> it's the larger in the inside than the fear in the outside. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> let me introduce our panel team today. Uh, Melanie, welcome, welcome, welcome back. How are you doing there, Melanie? Doing quite well. Hope everybody else is as well. Uh, it's actually getting cold here in Florida, at least. I know. Woke up to 45 degrees. I'm like, what is this nonsense? I put on no. the space I put on the space heater this morning while I was at work. I didn't think that was a thing anymore. I was just like, I put a blanket on and like, no, I need a space heater. I need it. <laughs> I need it badly yeah. there. When outside, I'm like, I need a jacket. Do I own a jacket? Where are the exactly. jackets? Honey, where do we keep the jackets again? You know, <laughs> like where we put them last, last January. I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to do my, my backyard fire when we're done here. <laughs> oh, my God. Good idea. Yeah, I got a fire pit. Because, because oh, I right. can. Because you I, can. Yeah. I did see the pictures of your pit. How is that? Have you cooked anything on it? Or is it just a pit pit? Yeah, it's just a pit pit. It's just, just uh, a pit. it's just a, a lows. I I get one every couple of years, and it lasts about two years. Then it just rusts out and falls yep. apart. Uh, and then okay. I wait like another year. I'm like oh, I should get a new one. Then I <laughs> I I finally broke down. I was like, all right, you know what? First things yeah. get crazy. Go bought a hundred dollar one. Boom, done. So. <laughs> And it's nice too because the neighbors are trimming. Stuff. The nice thing though about having a fire pit this time of year is the uh, when people start throwing away the Christmas trees. Uh-huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. There really is something behind the phrase "goes up like a Christmas tree" when they're talking about fire. I found that. <laughs> I, I found that out. What is my surprise about three years ago? Uh-huh. When I threw the top of one on, and, oh, this should be. It's like, uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> but here hose. in Florida, we don't know anything about that here. <laughs> so we don't know anything about. Speaking of things we don't know, I don't know why. That's a great segue. Hey, isn't that nice, Mackenzie? <laughs> that was a great Sorry. segue. To I you. apologize on behalf of everyone. The lovely art. Uh, uh, author Mackenzie Floyd, the right of ones. How are you doing, Mackenzie? What are you beating your face for? <laughs> <laughs> You're looking great today. I see you got the bow tie. I do. I have the bow tie. I've got the Sonic. And yes, this is the actual official Sonic. 
And of course, you can't go anywhere without a fez. Well, there we go. <laughs> Speaking oh, of a fez. I Speaking of fez, fez is I, I, wow. Okay. There you go. Uh, we're introducing <laughs> our special guest today, Patty Hawkins from Galaxy Con Online. How are you doing there, Patty? And tell us a little bit about Galaxy Con yeah. for, those of, for those of our uh, viewers and listeners who uh, may not be familiar with it and what you do there. Uh, GalaxyCon is a series of uh, physical conventions uh, spun off by the original co-founders of SuperCon, if you're familiar with that, uh, it was a national chain. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, since the world is uh, not as sociable as it once was, uh, GalaxyCon took the initiative to going into online formatting the, the programming with the idea that it's not just wedged into one weekend where some other shows are doing, hey, we're doing a whole show online and you can watch this on Twitch and watch this on YouTube, whatever. Instead, we're doing very controlled, very uh, uh, finite amount of programming every weekend. Right. Every weekend we have up to, uh, up to like four or five, like Fridays when we have one, Saturdays and Sundays we have like two or three each day. We actually had, I had four on Sunday this past Sunday. So it entails a, a free online Q&A with the cast and I usually host and uh, afterwards uh, uh, fans have the opportunity throughout the show, you have the opportunity to purchase autographs. They can be personalized. So we have a try to get a wide selection of stuff. Oh, I want that one. And can you make it out to Joe, your number one fan? And yeah, they will say to Joe, my number one fan. They'll they'll do that. I think with within reason. And uh, we actually now have a uh, send in uh, uh, option too. There's various criteria about it, but yes, you can send in an item. You can send in a sonic screwdriver. You can send this all the way to. And we've got a really good system of getting it to the celebrity and then send it back. <clears throat> I won't say it's fast. It'll take. You know, mm. yeah. six, six to eight weeks, possibly in some cases, but you will get the item, you will get it safe. And uh, yeah. And of course, we usually also have the option of uh, personal chats. Or as I like to say, if you'd like to chat with our guy, one of our panelists, like I am now, sign up and that immediately follows the QA. So you can, time is usually either uh, two to sometimes four minutes, depending on the celebrity and whatnot. And, um, and they have the ability to extend as well. The celebrity has a little button that they can push that'll do 10 seconds uh, add on. So if you're in the middle of telling a really deep, real heavy story, and then, you know, I, every day I would go to hospice and I'd show my dad the episodes and it got through them. And then one day he said, thank you for watching. That's all. I no, no, no. We, we have, we have minders in the room that will, 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 you'll, mm -hmm. you'll be able to tell that story. You'll be able to do it too and stuff like that. So it's been, it's been very popular and, uh, and like I said, it's, it's in the words of the owner, it's keeping it's keeping the lights on until yeah. the real convention can come back. <clears throat> Although I, I right now it looks like uh, this may be the new model. Even when different conventions come back, we may go ahead and keep this format anyway. Because the nice thing is that we're as I as I say at the top of the hour, we're bringing the convention experience to you. So we're at, we're able to bring that 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 experience to people who uh, because of their location or maybe because of uh, some uh, some ch personal challenges of their own, they just mm -hmm. can't do it. But instead, they're able to do it the online format. And I think so far because we're able to do it. Also, our our Q and As are live. We have a live yeah. chat room. We have people that it's not you tweet in and pre recorded. No, it's happening in real time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and that that's all and I think that's one thing that we are we do that nobody else really does. It's always sort of a pre-recorded and so if somebody farts, you know, it's <laughs> oh we'll edit that out. <laughs> but I was we, so but <laughs> <laughs> That's I just the right think, way to the commercial, I think. I don't, I don't, know. I don't know about that yet. But no. <laughs> I, no, I'm no, just well, imagining. No. Nobody, no, nobody's farted yet on any of my panels. <laughs> <laughs> I, I noticed we put up at the end, but somebody wanted to see the One Piece panel. Um, we had a, a funny yeah. thing there that uh, somebody, yeah, uh, Steven Skipper, the uh, the One Piece one, we had, we, had, we had six people on. Somebody's microphone was faulty and making this weird clattering background noise. Oh, God. So oh, we were no. trying to figure out what it was. So I turned it into a game. I threw the challenge out to our audience. If you could deduce which one of our panel. <laughs> <laughs> and they figured it out before I could because I was just too busy running the, the conversation and stuff. And, uh, yeah, it just it, – it's, it's a nice thing. that I'm not going to say anything can happen. But when something odd happens, we embrace it. We go forward. We have fun with it. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and you're not, I don't think you're going to see that in a pre recorded one. And all right, this was, this was tweeted in eight weeks ago. What's your favorite episode? 
be honest. Now, who yeah. do you, what do you recommend if somebody wants to get a better chance? Because I know, first of all, you want, uh, and l- let me just make sure that I'm getting this right. You want to be there as early as possible. You want to get in that room early as possible because uh, if you're late, you're, you're going to miss a lot of good stuff. You're going to miss a lot of good uh, information that comes up if you want to get and purchase some of the items yep. like the one-on-one chats or the autographs. But if somebody wants to get their question in, what would you recommend to them? <clears throat> Here's, here's what our team looks for. Um, mm-hmm. We look for, uh, we, we we tend to shy away from real deep, heavy, canical questions. Hey, episode 147, uh, uh, this happened, and what did you think mm-hmm. of that, or whatever. And also, too, um, <clears throat> we definitely look for questions that involve the entire panelists. So we try to do that ahead of time. People will try to say, and especially with this event with Matt Smith himself, who's going to be joining us for the first time. Where I. And, and, and in a live situation, you see that usually often. People will say, this question is for Matt, this question for so-and-so. And if you see me run my panels, I tell everybody ahead of time, you have to present a question towards the entire panel. Now, 99% of the time, that question can easily be tweaked a little bit to involve them. You know, it's, it's like if you think about it, it's like, oh, yeah, this question could be good for everybody. So that's the one thing we look for. We look for very broad questions that are more uh, to spark a conversation and and that will involve everyone um maybe not necessarily with doctor who could be question about their personal lives some people like to ask hey how have you kept busy during uh covid or quarantine or whatever that elicits some really interesting stories we really we really tend to to skew to talking to them as people we really do i Mm -hmm. I, 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 we talk to them as people we talk to the roles they played as a job and um Dang cat scream in the background. Is that mine? <laughs> oh, oh, hey, usually, let's play a game, everybody. Let's figure out who's got a cat screaming in the background on this show. <laughs> it's, it's usually mine. And, and, and when it was going up, Colin Baker was looking under his desk. And he was like, What's up, Colin? It's like, I'm looking for the cat. Oh, no, no. That's not right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised nobody could hear that because I was like, no. Oh. <laughs> just mention it up there and speaking of mention it for those of you who are just joining us you can talk to us and patty live here in the uh, live chat if you're joining us on the youtube channel or on uh facebook the stream yard or even on the twitch channel which we just recently got there uh type in your chats and uh if we like your question you're gonna be on here so and, again um, well, yeah. again it's and it, 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 it is it, we do it on stream yard so it is this format Right. It, it is it is this format. So it's just that we have our own private chat room that you when you register, you get a link, you click on that. Uh, mm-hmm. We usually try to open the chat room about a half hour ahead of time. And the nice thing is, is that we love it when they're bouncing stuff. Everybody's bouncing stuff in there, too. And I can't see the chat room, but our producers will let me know, hey, the chat room is, is going crazy. They want to, to see this or want to do that or whatever. So, mm-hmm. right. Again, and it's wise to sign up early to get exactly. that link for the chat room. Not, don't wait to the last yeah. minute because Lord knows how much, yeah. how many, how many other people, if you've got other, you know, hundreds, hundred of people all signed up at the same time, you not might not get that link in 20 minutes. I, yeah. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to say that there, there, there have been some odd issues uh, lately, not just with us, but I think a lot of people with stream right or whatever to, uh, mm-hmm. yeah. So just, just to, yeah, just 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 try to sign up and get the link. And if you don't get the link within uh, 24 hours, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, email GalaxCon directly and just say, "Hey, I never got my confirmation link," and they will attend it to you right away. So, because I think this, I think this is gonna be, be really fun. Like I said, we've uh, we've hosted hosted everybody else, and um, and when the boss finally told me, he's like, "All right, we 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 got we got Matt Smith finally coming." It's like, okay, we're gonna. Mm-hmm. Gonna do them solo, or are we gonna do them with the whole gang? It's like I'm gonna try to bring in the whole family, mm-hmm. and we got close. Uh, you know, he really, really tried to get to Alex Kingston. She, she just hey, she had another commitment. Otherwise, yeah. shit, that mm-hmm. would have been the. Uh, and maybe this goes well. But certainly do another one. So I would imagine gonna... doing the scheduling for virtual cons is a little bit easier to get the planets to align rather than trying to get them all to fly out to uh, New Orleans or all, you know, that kind of deal. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> well, it, yeah, it's tricky because, yeah, usually, well, the advantage of the physical ones is usually get that in writing a yeah. year, year and a half ahead of time sometimes. Mm-hmm. That, of course, can just be bogged by, well, you know, I booked a commercial or I'm at this or just whatever. Yeah, absolutely. Too. Yes, this... 
this this format does tend to be able to get stopped by two. Oh, okay, I gotta get up here or whatever. It's like, oh, I thought it was I thought it was nine o'clock my time. Oh, five a.m. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and 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 in this day and age, when they're looking for work right now, and they are looking for work, if they get work, they you know they gotta feed, they gotta feed, they gotta live, they gotta do stuff. So it's totally understandable. And, and, and they and and they enjoy it, and they, they they like bouncing off each other, and they just uh, yeah, it, they they can be comfortable wherever they're at. And if there's always something interesting to pop in the background, I'll be like, what's that you got behind there? Oh, hey, that's from uh, that play you did in West End. Uh, tell us about that. It's, oh, yeah, this old thing, whatever you know. When I did John Barrowman, he lifted up his his laptop and walked around his, his whole uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, tour. Stately, yeah, stately Barrowman Manor and, toward uh, the Barrowman Manor. <laughs> yeah, you know, nice. it's, yeah, it's walking through this way too. It's oh, it's a post original poster for Day of the Earth Stood Still, one of my favorite movies. Blah blah. blah. And here's Fairy from Hidden Planet, and I held up my Robbie the Robot. And he's like, I have one of those. Uh, you know, <laughs> so, <laughs> I I wish I I wish we could put that in pop. Like I said. I don't know if this panel will be allowed to be dropped on our YouTube channel. Like I said, some are, some aren't. It is all on the contracts and and what goes on with it. So, and I, I never know and, until like until I just never see it. So. <laughs> Speaking of uh, feeding people, we got a commercial break. We we're on a hard break, but for those of you just joining us, we mean up. Uh, this is Mr. Patty Hawkins. He is the host of Galaxy Con Online, and this Saturday. Mm -hmm. At noon, you definitely want to sign up. And if you look at the uh, the uh, the website out there, galaxycon.com, make sure you sign up. Make sure you're in there ahead of time because those things will go fast, especially now that this is going to be Matt Smith's first GalaxyCon. Go to galaxycon.com and meet the cast of Doctor Who, which include Karen Gillan, Jenna Coleman, okay. Matt Smith himself, and Arthur Darville. When we return, please continue to stay logged on, tune in, and we're going to continue our chat and our tribute to Matt Smith. When we return to the legend of the traveling TARDIS, please become part of the legend. Bateman. What's the Bateman? A novel set in Florida, written by Florida author D.L. Havlin. Suspense, mystery, and murder. Evidence is in the bait. The Bateman is available at local bookstores and online. Author Cindy Kep is writing on the edge. Books include Remnant in the Stars, The Loudest Actions, Lines of Succession, Mindstorm, Condemned Courier, The Yerushalon Series, and Animal Eye. Find author Cindy Kep at C-K-O-E-P-P dot -P com today. Jackie Sonnenberg's My Soul to Keep is a ghost story rooted in the realities of actual cults. When 13-year-old Sky Monroe arrives at her new boarding school, all she can think about is death and connecting with the afterlife. Soon she discovers her school's spirituality group, the Guardians of Light, and they have a secret. They can speak with the dead, and the organization is a cult. But this isn't Skye's only problem. The campus house where Sky resides is haunted, and even the ghosts have an agenda. They intend on getting the souls they want. Filled with mystery and intrigue plucked straight from the headlines, author Jackie Sonnenberg's research and attention to detail give this ghost story an even more eerie atmosphere. Find My Soul to Keep on Amazon.com today. Deborah Parmley's Jenna's Christmas Wish Santa, if there's one thing I want for Christmas more than anything It's someone to spend Christmas with Someone who really wants me to be there Head to the mountains of East Tennessee With romance author Jenna Hart for a Christmas writer's workshop Since her mother passed after a long illness Jenna has had one wish She doesn't want to spend Christmas alone Meeting Niccolo Maldini, cover model and actor, could make more than Jenna's Christmas wish come true. Unless Ember, Niccolo's ex-girlfriend, does something crazy to stop them from being together. It's a mountain Christmas romance you won't want to miss in Deborah Parmley's Jenna's Christmas Wish 
Now on Amazon.com. You know, Melanie McKenzie, I actually saw the last episode of Game On, which Dave had a little bit of a technical problem trying to start the show. (laughs) And I still get my razz for that. So uh, I'm just letting Dave know that I saw it. I I saw it there. Speaking of saw it, uh, if you're watching this on the YouTube channel or the Facebook page or on our Twitch channel, please don't thank us. Thank our friends at geekinsider.com. Geekinsider.com. Subscribe and tell them the legend of the traveling TARDIS sent you. At Geek Insider, we foster relationships with those in the geek sphere so we can give our audience the insider view of entertainment, tech, and more. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to The Legend of the Traveling Tardis. My name is Christian Basil, and I'm here with all these wonderful people, Melanie Dean, Mackenzie Floor, and Patty Hawkins, the host hey. of GalaxyCon Online. Uh, GalaxyCon online you can check him out and everything he does hosting his hosting duties at galaxycon.com there both don't forget to subscribe and again if you're just joining us we had a special going on at galaxycon with four of the celebrities from doctor including for his very first time matt smith jenna coleman arthur darville and karen gillen will be there saturday december 12th at noon Eastern Standard Time, noon p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So make sure after this show you sign up at galaxycon.com. And uh, welcome, Wanda. Welcome, Patty, there. So um, um, I guess, you know, normally we do the the TARDIS thing, and I, I don't know if I want to do a TARDIS rating on Matt because I kind of like Matt. But what do you guys think? Do you want to do a TARDIS rating on Matt? You know, just want to give it a try. It's like, no, Mackenzie, you don't want. <laughs> is, is that like? I don't know. What? That, it was, yeah, it's, 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 it's a like one how many how many Tardises? Yeah. <laughs> uh, from what scale? One to five. One to one ten. To, one to ten. One being. Yeah, I'm like overall arc. I mean, he. It's just Over- like any other. For me, I'm like he's, he's like any other doctor. He's got strong episodes. Yeah. He's got episodes. Yeah, sometimes exactly. Because his writing. Sometimes it was just like the whole thing was kind of like. Just not my cup of tea, so yeah, I kind of stay away from rating personally. Okay, Sorry, well, well, no, we'll stay away from the rating, but I'm going to follow up on you, Melanie. What did you ah. think of Matt's portrayal of the 11th Doctor? And when you first saw him come online, what did you think? What, what, what was your first impression of Matt? Um, he, like any other doctor, I think he really did make it his own. Um, it was very unique, I think. One thing that Matt's portrayal kind of separated uh, from, for me, kind of separated his doctor from, from everybody else is that he really had this, this feeling of an old ancient being trapped in a young man's body. Um, and not just because he was the youngest doctor ever or actor portraying the doctor, but mm. in the, you know, this ancient centuries old being, he had a lot of mannerisms that were very, old or 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 unique to somebody like an old man that's just 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 different uh, way around it mm-hmm. um different ways that he would just simply just kind of like not really speak or anything but it would like to turn on his heel or do a like slow kind of mannerisms kind of thing so um yeah i i think that was the thing that i, I noticed the most when he first got into the role and just like every other doctor it's as you got to you know the few seasons under the belt you you got to see them hit their stride and do what they do so best you know and in their portrayal yeah Mackenzie, i know you would have given matt a 10 (laughs) 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 kind of wearing his outfit right there Mackenzie. you see matt smith come up uh he gets up after david ten regenerates and what was your first impression when he first says geronimo in that first episode uh that he does well power I always get crucified for telling this story, but I, I was, I didn't like him. I didn't You're like not the him only one. I no, no, no. Trust You're me. trapped by him. <laughs> what? No, no, no. And I, Mackenzie, I was actually going to say <laughs> that you? because there are people I know who left Doctor Who for a while. They left, but they came right back after a couple episodes. They it wasn't their their cup of tea after the eleventh hour, but as soon as they got out past the. Uh, uh, the beast below. They started to kind of warm up when they. Uh, I think it was, uh, what was it? The v- victory of the Daleks. Hmm. Um, they kind of started warming up. So you said you didn't like him. So when did he start warming up to you? 
actually it was when I got to meet him, which was oh. right before the Christmas episode at the end of his tenure. And the reason why I didn't like him, it wasn't him as personal or the actor necessarily or the writing. It was for me from a mental health perspective, I had a very difficult time adjusting between David's doctor who was very much, I called him kind of the emo doctor to man who was like, ah! you know, I just couldn't, for me, from a mental health perspective, I just could not understand the difference until actually I had a mental breakdown myself. And then after is my way of coming back, I actually looked to his doctor and that helped me become who I became. And that's probably one of the reasons why when I became a writer, I chose to write my main character of the writer wants for literally Matt, as well as for my TV screenplay that I'm trying right now to find some producers for that I wrote it that way too. And I plan on sticking it that way too. Yeah, yeah. Well, oh. I'm getting a little bit of a feedback here. <laughs> it's not me. It's not me. It might be me if I'm if I hit the desk. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, if I hit the desk, let's see. If you hit the desk. Yeah, I just did it. Did. <laughs> no, that's okay. Still a little bit. Let me. See. We'll, we'll, we'll try something over here. But first, we got a question out there. Um, Yet it is. Okay. Yet it is from our YouTube channel. Matt Smith was my first doctor and will always have a special place in my heart. Oh, that's awesome. So this panel sounds amazing. Well, thank you. Question for you all. Do you guys have a favorite 11th doctor scene? Patty, since you're up, um, might as well go ahead. What is your favorite 11th doctor scene? Can't pick one. I, I'm like, uh, yeah, here we go. <laughs> Uh, it, it, to 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 be almost to just okay for just uh, my favorite and maybe not something that's bombastic or important or anything else. Uh, I really liked his reading on the Ice Warrior, uh, the one when he oh. finds out the Ice Warrior is Skaldax and and this shit about it's like hero of the Phobos Heresy, you know, it's like leader of the Phoenician Army, you know, he's like. He's like scared and reverent at the same time because he knows right. this 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 thing is the equivalent of Napoleon and Patton and the uh, the Ice Warrior architect. It just yeah, I, I, I that one lingers. That one still lingers. It's a it's a it's a good reading. It's, it's a powerful scene, and it may not be everyone's favorite because it's not like you know oh well so something from the fiftieth or whatever. But uh, yeah, yeah, I'll go with that one. Gotcha. I'll go with that one. Melanie, what was your favorite uh, Matt Smith scene? Yeah. I'm saving Mackenzie for last. I'm literally just trying to go through now everything that I'm trying to... I'm saving Mackenzie for last because I know she's got at least 10 minutes to think about this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This That's is difficult because I'm like trying to go, okay, something from the Vincent and the Doctor. I'm like, no, my favorite part of that wasn't him. <laughs> it was Bill Nighy's speech about, about Vincent. It just... Um, oh, this is difficult. Wow. Okay, Molly, I'm going to I'll get back to you. Mackenzie, do you have one that jumps out and just says, hey, this is uh, this is the moment. This is my 11th Doctor scene. For me, I would have to say it has to do when, when the paradox was happening and that big scene where he jumps up and starts talking to the world. The Stonehenge scene. Yeah, the Stonehenge. That was, for me, that was, I think that was the moment when I was like, oh, yes, the Doctor. I see the Doctor and especially during the second run through when I did it, I, I loved it at that point. Of course, I always loved rivers. So anything with river, if rivers involved, <laughs> it makes it better. <laughs> what spoke to you through that scene? What, what, what came out on there? Because I know you have a special connection for the 11th doctor. What, what spoke to you amongst that scene amongst the other scenes that he's done? Probably with that one, it was just the whole aspect of saying like, you, you know, the world is against me. Come get me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and that's kind of how I feel too for myself as a writer is when I write something, I feel because a lot of times as a writer, some writers, they don't actually publish because they're afraid that they're going to get a bad review. And I more look at it as come at me. You're going to, if you're going to give me a bad review or whatever, come at me, I can take it. <laughs> so in that way, it makes me feel like the doctor is saying the same thing, being brave, really yeah. showing that 
heroism. Get a bad review. Just, just you know, just oh, just put just put videos on YouTube, and trust me, you'll you'll get enough to 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 toughen yourself up. Oh yeah, I've done that already. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a content creator, so I do do that. <laughs> yeah, I don't, you know. I actually don't. I never read YouTube comments. <laughs> <laughs> I, I try. Yeah. I try not to. <laughs> I I downloaded a browser app that specifically blocks all uh, all comments on YouTube. I can go to any YouTube channel on my desktop, and I never see the comments ever. Uh, oh, okay. I wish that I had something like that because it, I always they tell you as a as a writer you should never read your reviews or mm -hmm. respond to them. I never re I don't respond to them, but I do read all of them just because I think that there might be something that would be helpful, but. When you come across that one that is just completely just destroys everything that you've done, just because have, whatever. Have, have 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 a friend read them. Yeah. And if, they, <laughs> no, and if they see a pattern, then they'll give it to you, and they'll know you well enough to know that um, you know your 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 main character. Uh, you kept having saying that he did this, and it got a little repetitious. You know, it's just like he put a piece of gum in his mouth. Put a piece of gum in. Put a piece of gum in his mouth. You know, it's, yeah. It's, it just the, yeah. Yeah, that 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 was, and uh, I know other people in the situation too that they do have that. They have one one good friend that they trust, read the reviews, and then they, if there's any value to it, or it's like, you might want to try doing this. Mm -hmm. I suppose if you read the review, I'm, ah, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, that was the last review I re I actually read was just like, Bleh, just like that. <laughs> Melanie. Have you figured out what you need to uh, uh, I'm going to go. Yeah, I had to kind of think about it. Um, and I'm still thinking about it. Oh, I'm just going to let's go with the snowman between him and at the, like towards the very end where he is kind of jockeying off of the great intelligence. Mm -hmm. It was uh, McKellen going back. Ian McKellen. One, Sir one, Ian him McKellen. Coming, one him coming in and then playing the Sherlock music. Uh, I thought that was a, a fun little thing with Moffat going. <laughs> I can do this um, and make this crossover because I do this. I, I own both of these. No, own asterisk. Um, but no, I'll just kind of go with that that interplay between the two because I think he was very much in his element as a little a little goofy, a little bit more kind of flamboyant in in his mannerisms and 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 to to complement what he was articulating, but also bring a little bit more gravity to the situation because he he's yelling at a big bad so. I'll go with there. Gotcha. There. Is how, about you? Gonna... how about you, Christian? Well, I'm glad you asked, Patty. Yeah. When we return to the Legend of the Traveling Tardis, we got a commercial break. <laughs> she Please said to stay logged <laughs> on, tuned in, and you're going to find out what my favorite uh, moment is of Matt Smith when we return. And don't forget to sign up. And I noticed that somebody in the chat has already signed up. I think it was Stephen Skipper. Yeah, somebody signed up for Galaxy Con. There it is. Stephen Skipper just signed up. When we return, please continue to stay logged in, tune in, and become part of the legend. Alien invaders enslave Earth. Unleashing hunters into the ruined wastes. One young survivor struggles to elude their monsters clinging to hope. When he's stolen off the planet by a sarcastic starship AI, they, they pit their, their uneasy, uneasy alliance, alliance against, against a treacherous, treacherous galaxy. galaxy. Explore a whole new verse of barbarism and betrayal. Wonder and adventure. In the Scion series. By Michael J. Allen. Beginning with book one, Scion Conquered Earth. Available in print, ebook, and audio on Amazon.com. Experience Samara's adventure as she imagines the people around her change into friendly cartoon animals right before her eyes. Journey with her in this poetic tale, My Cartoon Imagination at School. Now on Amazon.com, I coin from author Jeremy Mosby. It's an alternate reality and the leader of the planet I coin is none other than Benjamin Franklin. When corrupt officials threaten not only iCoin, but the Earth as well, an unlikely chosen one, Jeremy, must face dark foes to save the Earth and iCoin alike. Author Jeremy Mosby takes readers on a superhero's adventure through this compelling and imaginative alternate universe. Get iCoin on Amazon.com today. Meet the Doctor. I'm the Doctor. But not the one you were expecting. All right, sexy. Time to go home. Doctor Who Velocity, streaming now. Hi. Were you guys waiting for me to answer that question? Good. Because we just have a little bit one more thing to mention out there. For those of you who um, may not be aware, we now have 
a merchandise shop for the Legend of the Traveling Tardis. There is a link right there. And until uh, December the 15th, we are having a 20% off sale off of everything. For whatever reason, the skateboards are not included, but everything off of our merchandise shop. Go ahead and check out our link out there. And if you decide to purchase more than $99, shipping is completely free. You can check out uh, some of the stuff like, oh, we have masks. We have t-shirts. And we have some other stuff you want to choose out there. So go to the link out there. It is the threadless link. And we'll have it posted on the episode um, if you want to check it out later. This show doesn't pay for itself. So if you guys want to check it out there, go to the link provided over there. Everything's 20% off up until December the 15th. For all your Whovian friends out there, check it out out there at the threadless.com shop. And thank you for joining us there. Uh, everybody's come back. Uh, my name is Christian Basil. I've got Melanie Dean. I've got Mackenzie Floor. No, that's not, uh, that is not Matt Smith in the corner, but just as lovely. And we have host of Galaxy Con Online. Patty Galaxy Hoffman. Con Live. Ca Galaxy Con Live? Yeah. That's okay. official. Uh, it's it's saying it's online. And uh, to, to respond to Jenny's question, really quick yeah. here, Jenny, uh, uh, when the chat room opens a half hour before the the the, the Q and A, the chat room will open, and you just go on in there, and you just uh, just type on in. Hey, I have a question, uh, and just type it on through, and our producers will look at it, and if they decide it's good enough question. They'll uh, they'll roll it through and it'll scroll down at the bottom of it. So I look forward to hopefully uh, saying, "Hey, this comes from Jenny, and she wants to know." Da 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 da. -da. So that's how it is. Yeah. And yeah, again, it's, it's done in the chat room. Okay. <clears throat> also, too, if people, uh, we also look at. Uh, I believe the team also looks at. If somebody asks a question. If somebody else responds, "Ooh, that's a good one." I hope they pick that one. That's that's something else that may, may elevate the, the the chances of getting the question in. And again, most likely, if it's a question that's generic to everybody, there's more of a chance that they your question will get up front there. Very much so. As, as opposed to specifically somebody out there, they want to make sure that all the attendees get a get a. Yeah, exactly, job. and that's something that just yeah constantly and, and it comes on and we try to tell people that up front and they'll still like this question is for so and so or not thinking about it, it's something that really gets involved the deep uh just last week with uh, William Shatner and Kate Mulgrew mm -hmm. people were throwing questions on that w w they thought in their minds it was relevant but it really wasn't mm -hmm. for, for both so you know kind of like a hey it's my birthday say help happy birthday to me yeah, you so have to. Like, yeah, you have to. Uh, you have to get a private chat for them. To there say you go. That. Yeah, <laughs> or just pick the do go to their cameo accounts. Uh, yeah, we don't do the private shout outs, but uh, the nice thing I will say this much too about the, the the chats that we do, they are recorded for you. Like mm -hmm. twenty minutes after they're done, you get a copy of it. So it's like it's you talk. The 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 guest is full screen, and your little sub screen is up in the upper half on the left hand corner. So uh, you get that mm -hmm. as well. And I, I did, did see, sorry. Okay. No, no, go ahead. No, I did see that now that it's something new ish that maybe I just haven't seen before, and it's virtual photo ops. Yes. Uh, basically, what do I. So instead of um, I've got a chat, you just uh, you just get ready and they come on and you're like click click like this so like, hey hey and they get that moment. There's a couple of options. I'll, I'll be totally honest. I'm not. 100% privy on the exact details, but mm -hmm. uh, as I understand it, it's a, uh, it's it's you know what it is. It's almost like a real photo op. It's the same technology as the private chats, but it's like the real professional photo op. You go on in, you take the shot. Thank you, and mm -hmm. I love you. I love you. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Next. <laughs> Next. Next. Exactly. Next. Exactly. You should exactly. try out, kid. And, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, and it's. And it's so funny too, and 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 um, and I know we talked about this uh, when when this starts back again, like doing like little instruction videos for photo ops for people. Mm -hmm. to, hey, just so you don't know this works, you go in, you take the shot, you can say hi, you can say thank you, and that's kind of about it. Yeah, that's all the time you have. It's that's go. kind of about. It. <laughs> ah! now, now maybe the guest might take a a shine to you and then, and they'll do it too. You know, I know uh, at another convention, um, Jeff Goldblum just completely blew the schedule because he, oh, no. he, he, he was just like, <laughs> uh, uh, Hey, I, I really like your outfit. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So he just, nobody explained to him how it worked. 
So that was like four <laughs> photos right there. That he wound up. And his, his Q&A ended up being like 15 minutes. It was like, hey, everybody. Yes, I'm really here. If you can't see me at the end of the line and okay, but yeah. You know, so. <laughs> oh, my God. I can see that. No, I can see that. I was like, yeah. oh, he scheduled from for two hours to do photo. He ends up doing six hours because he's still on like number five on the, in yeah. the line. Yeah, because he just, cause he just didn't, didn't. Yeah, like no, but nobody explained to him how it, it it's supposed to work. Yeah. And, no, he's and, yeah, and that's having that's, a conversation. Yeah, and that's and that's not to prevent people from having fun or everything else. It's just. Yeah. You know, we get with these are the devs, then we got to have you back at the table so we can do the autographs. And mm -hmm. that's when we could yeah. usually, in a perfect world, you can have a little more, hey, how you doing? Okay, that's good. That's fine. You know, although some age listers, sometimes it's just, who's this for? Just, okay, whatever. But yeah, yeah that's that, that, that's the old days and the once in future conventions. Right now, we're, we're in this, we're in this amazing cyber age. So, yeah. and Christian, you owe us yeah. an answer. Yeah, I do owe you an answer out there. I want. I also want to thank Mackenzie and Melanie and Dave for doing the last, away. Week, last week's episode. <laughs> I am. I'm yeah. kidding. I just, I just wanted to thank you guys for doing last week's. You're episode. welcome. Answer. Great. You're welcome. I, just, um, I got. It, I got. Well, here's the reason why I'm actually following on Mackenzie's the Pandora speech, but I'll explain because I convinced Wonder Woman to watch Doctor Who via yeah. that speech. Uh, what happened was is that I was actually next to a. Uh, when we were at conventions, I was at a booth next to a cosplayer who was cosplaying Wonder Woman. And she legitimately came, uh, she, she wanted to know legit. She was like, I've never watched Doctor Who. Can you, you know, she was trying to like convince me to watch Doctor Who, you know, what, what what's so great about it. And just happened to be, there was a monitor next to me. And at the time that it was playing, it was playing the Pandorica speech with Matt Smith on there. So I explained to her in Wonder Woman terms how, my doctor is the best character out there. And I explained to her, I said, could you, ma I asked her, I said, I'm assuming Wonder Woman is your favorite uh, character. She goes, yes. And I said, could you imagine Wonder Woman taking her gauntlets off, throwing down the lasso, taking the, the crown off, standing on top of the rock and everybody around her, uh, uh, I don't know her from uh, her bad guys offhand, but like Cheetah, everybody she's ever fought is standing right around her, and they could lash at her at any given moment. They could rip her apart, but they don't. They just decide to stand there. And she says the most ultimate thing you could say to all of your bad guys at the same time. In fact, we know the cards are down on her. If we're playing a game of Texas Hold'em, She's not only uh, holding a 2-7 off suit, but she's convinced all the bad guys she's got a royal flush in the game. And then she says the one thing to the other bad guys, let somebody else try first. And they all back away. And I explained to her, this is the doctor. This is how he works. His name alone resonates throughout the universe. And it scares and terrifies people and is loved and beheld by others just by the name alone that we saw in river song of uh, um, a good man goes to war. Mm -hmm. This is the kind of thing that the doctor has become. He is the alien that can terrify people by name alone and just by his stature. And he can tell the worst enemies at the worst time. They're going to kill them. <laughs> All day it was one shot, but everybody was so scared of him that they backed off, even though they knew they could just take one shot and get him. But they didn't. And that to me is my doctor. Remember who right it now. was who beat you. You remember it is who it was who beat you. Remember the you know, every black day that I've stopped you. And that's how I convinced Wonder Woman <laughs> to watch that. Now I don't know if she's still there. I haven't seen her at the conventions. But she said, Okay, I'm gonna start watching now. After I and I used her Wonder Woman, uh, you know, her geekdom of Wonder Woman to show her what my what Doctor Who was. So that's why I hit that one. Yeah, yeah. Now, Mother Woman's rogues is a very shallow bench. I mean, she's literally got, <laughs> no, she's literally got like five. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thirsty Aries, Doctor Psycho, Cheetah, Giganta, yeah. and then Doctor Cyber. Uh, hey, it was my story. Know. I had to explain and, it. <laughs> and I was like, I convinced her. And Egg, egg Fu, who uh -huh. nobody. 
nobody talks about anymore in our enlightened times. And I'll leave it at that. Google it. And uh, yeah, don't say I didn't warn you. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, uh, yet it is. Uh, says that wonderful answer to my admittedly confusing question, guys. Thank you. My favorite, my personal favorite 11 Doctor moment would be his monologue from the Rings of Akatan or Fear Me, I Killed Them All, which I think is the best um, retort to to House when he was when he was going like, I fear me, I've killed you know thousands of Time Lords, mm -hmm. and the Doctor goes, Fear me, I killed them all. <laughs> so yeah. I was like. So I, I, and I think it was just brilliantly done because he had the advantage, Matt had the advantage of Moffat's writing and Moffat's love for Doctor Who. And that translated, especially into the Doctor's wife, all these great stories that, uh, uh, but I, you know, I digress that he kind of had that, had those moments where it kind of got a little bit weird, <clears throat> weirded like the Pandorica. But I still, you know, I, I appreciated that because there were all these wonderful moments like the Pandorica, like the moment that he's facing off house. I, I, and I, I will, I, I will honestly say there, there are more very, very pleasurable a la carte moments in Matt Smith's tenure than I think put together stories. Yeah. If that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. there's, there's lots of really, Oh, this was a great scene. This was a good moment. This was, a, there was a lot, there's a lot of really good stuff there too, but a, a lot of them just see, and that's on Moppet. That's not on the actress. That's not anything else. That's on Moppet. And, and again, I've said about this before where he, he had too much investiture in the companions with, and almost mania to Clara is going to be the greatest companion ever. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, and and you and you, and, you, yeah. and, you, and you and you saw that on the on the fiftieth, you know, which was like, yeah. all right, instead of the you know, it's all right, we gotta have Clara in there, and 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 Russell T Davies invested heavily in Rose, so we had to have her in there as the moment, and it's like I I. I'm okay with these companions, but I just, uh, to this day, I'm like, I'm like, I'm literally like 51%, 49% split on the 50th. And I don't know, and it wavers in various days. Every, every couple, about every 18 months, I'll revisit it. And I'm like, okay, this is 51% awesome. And 49% I have problems with. And then it goes back and forth. So mm -hmm. I, can't, I can't, well, I got to give Moffitt a little bit. You know, I I don't I, I and I I no I value your opinion on that uh, at Patty. I just I can also see you know a lot of the challenges that Moffat had mm -hmm. that was on his table. So I uh, yeah, there's so much we can criticize about that, but a lot of that I'm kind of happy. And I knew the 50th anniversary would have to be fan service in some form or fashion. Tom Baker walks in and says his line, and I, I remember I was in a room with Whovians, and they all exploded some of them even started to cry i'm like what the heck <laughs> you know they were just getting teary I, 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 we knew that 50th anniversary was gonna be fan service the story was kind of iffy but i loved it just the same and we got capaldi eyes from it and mm -hmm. we got david tennant and matt smith and and john hurt you know uh having it out there, there, again, and, again. Just, so lots of great character moments lots right. of great scenes the narratives yeah I, and, and, and even going back into the day, I've always said this before. Uh, 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 Moffat is is fantastic at writing these good mm -hmm. emotional scenes, but I think he leaned too heavily on it and narrative logic. He kind of he kind of eschewed that to just get to these emotional beat scenes and mm -hmm. not caring how he got there to it. The same way when you write a slasher Friday Thirteenth, it's a horror movie. Mm -hmm you throw out narrative logic so that Jason could chop off somebody's head, yeah. you know, with an outboard motor or something. Oh, right. let's go yeah. make you're, out you're, you're in, the, you're, in the boat, in the boat house, you know? Yeah. You're, yeah. you're just trying to make plot filler. It's filler to get to the next kill. Exactly. Yeah, yeah exactly. And I, I really felt like that Moffat, whether he knew it or not, he just, he early on, he recognized, Oh, when, when we have a really emotional scene and power of this way too. And sometimes it serves it very well. Like I said, I consider, the wedding episode of Sherlock to be one of the finest bits of mm -hmm. television writing yeah. of the 21st century. You know, the, the speech he does in there too. And he's got some wonderful scenes there too. I just, yeah, I, 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 I wish I could have been in the room and said, maybe we could do this. Maybe he just, can we have <laughs> yeah, the right. other, can we have the other doctors do something, uh, you know, give them a day pay rate. It's, yeah. So this is me. Yeah. I will say what it, I agree with you 100% there. 
to not think companions because after a while it just Clara just graded on me mo mostly in uh, the Capaldi's run. Um, I loved whenever the, the Matt Smith doc, whenever Matt Smith's doctor interacted with the Paternoster gang. I think that was a little bit more fun because you had a little bit mm -hmm. more, not chemistry, but it was more fun because you had an ensemble and he really yeah. worked well against other characters in an ensemble. It, it, and uh, this is, and please, this is not a nudge on Jenna Coleman because she's going to be there <laughs> this weekend. No, but and she's lovely. No, this is this all writing No, this is to me on Moffat. I loved Snowman Clara. I understood why she wanted to run into the TARDIS. I loved Dalek Clara. I could understand why she wanted to get into the TARDIS. But Clara Prime, I had some really misgivings because it, it just the writing was not supporting why she wanted to run into the TARDIS. In fact, there were times that she wanted to run out of the TARDIS. I'm like, so why are you getting in here? But I love the, the way that Jenna and Matt had worked on the snowmen. It was just so brilliant how they were just matched up with each other. They worked together. And even though it was kind of teetering on lubby dubby, it didn't get into there. It just, it, it didn't seem it wouldn't get into there. And then they killed her off. And they're just like, same thing with, uh, uh, Dalek Claire, there was some flirtation, there was some fun, but I understood why she wanted to run into the TARDIS and, and she didn't even know she was in a Dalek. So, but I mean, that's a testament to Jenna Coleman and the way that she interacted with, with Matt. It was just a fun experience. Mm -hmm. I, 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 will, I will say, uh, in my, in my, in Moffat's defense, mm -hmm. I will defend him on one point during his tenure that a lot of people send the crap on, and that is I loved the Paradigm Daleks. <laughs> Taste the rainbow. <laughs> Get killed by the rainbow, you know. I, 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 I had absolutely no problem with them. I like the fact that you know, colors were done before. Oh, no, this makes perfect sense. Okay, you can see a bunch of a red tide of soldier Daleks coming through, and oh, okay. And I love the knowledge of the Dalek Eternal which was just a, a back door for some ass pole they wanted to do plot wise later. But I like the idea of like, wow, like a Dalek Pope, you know, just, <laughs> yeah, just something, just something really in the Pope mobile. <laughs> yeah, just something really just odd as it is of it too. And uh, it, it, yep. Hey, it didn't take. And um, I, I thought, I thought, I, I thought, it could have been somewhere. I will always say, like, I had your back on that all the way, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I tell you, but when you compare it to their previous one, especially the the victory of the victory of the Daleks, the, it kind of just kind of felt like, okay, it looks like now we're staring at Care Bears with plungers. I just, I, I, and I wanted to work. I wanted it so much to work. But it just didn't seem like they were more menacing. And uh, now I'm getting, you know, the new Daleks that are coming out uh, for a, uh, uh, was a revolution? No, <laughs> can't even remember. Revolution of the Daleks. You know that they put out the and they have this like blue light special go thing going on on their neck, and I'm just like, okay. And somebody actually sent me a picture of Tron, and I'm like, oh, they're Tron Daleks. <laughs> <laughs> do they have the little? Uh, do they have the discs on their back so they can throw them? They make there? ninety degree turns. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we, uh, we actually have a Tron reunion on uh, December twenty sixth oh, okay. at noon. Well, there we uh, go. Yeah. Yeah, we've got uh, yeah, we've got uh, the, the three principals. Uh, we've got Bruce Boxleitner, uh, who Christian and I have sat with before, and he's just fantastic. Uh, Cindy Morgan, and of course David Warner, mm. oh, who, I as we all know, is one of those guys that's been in, in probably three, but probably about eighty percent of anything we love. Yes. I hate you. David Warner. Really? <laughs> Gotta throw that at me. Speaking of throwing out at me, we're on a commercial break. When we return, we're going to wrap up our discussion. Don't forget to go to galaxycon.com uh, to yes. register and get signed up. And you want to sign up right away. When we return, please continue to stay logged on, tune in, and continue to become part of the list. Famous Faces and Funnies in Melbourne, Florida is leading the way in pop culture fun. From comic books and graphic novels to Funko Pops and collector's items, Famous Faces and Funnies has it all. Rick Shea and the professional team at Famous Faces and Funnies are friendly and knowledgeable. Whether you're looking for toys, props, collector treasures, or a new comic book, Famous Faces and Funnies is your one-stop shop. To find Famous Faces and Funnies on Facebook and Twitter, just type at FFFComics. Author Cindy Kep is writing on the edge. 
Books include Remnant in the Stars, The Loudest Actions, Lines of Succession, Mindstorm, Condemned Courier, The Yerushalon Series, and Animal Eye. Find author Cindy Kep at C K O E P P dot com today. If anything you must understand, it is this. If I do not find a cure, my life is forfeit. Myrta McKinnon, rise. It is your time to participate in the Rite of Wands, in which your soul shall face the ultimate analysis. Do you accede? Yes. This can't be the way things end. Heed my advice, young warlock. The future you saw is only a possibility. You will be given the ability to change it. How? I suggest you start by studying your father's potion books. Lachlan the Shreya has come to my Verna. I must focus solely on my work. I am afraid. I do not want to fail. And you can pick up a copy of The Right of Wands by me, Mackenzie Floor, at Amazon.com and MackenzieFloor.com, as well as Barnes & Noble, any place you would like to see your book at. You can find it. I really like that you're doing that in the 11th Doctor's <laughs> outfit. <laughs> right? Like, I don't know is, why. I kind of, when you told that Wonder Woman story, I was like, oh my gosh, you know, I had a similar experience because when I do any type of book signing, I'm actually usually dressed as the 11th Doctor because I find most of my people like Doctor Who. So, of course, it makes sense. I had, I want to say, three people within the last year that they didn't know who Matt Smith was. They didn't know what Doctor Who was. They just were really taken by the outfit and they loved that I was carrying this wand. And so I ended up having to tell the story about how the character of Myrta was written for Matt. Later on, they come around a couple Comic Cons later, find me, they go, Hey, you know what? I just wanted to tell you, I want to meet Matt Smith and I want you there too, so that we can all have a photograph together. I'm like, Seriously? I <laughs> like it. <laughs> so there you go. There. Yeah. Speaking, speaking now, of- have you considered dressing like Wonder Woman? Yes. <laughs> I could probably pull it off. There we go. <laughs> I would have to get a wig, but that's okay. <laughs> well, you keep it red because you could be the Artemis version of Wonder Woman uh, when she took the title in the 90s. That's true. I could. Just saying. Just saying. <laughs> Got Carl Woodsman saying, wasn't the idea of the OG Daleks to destroy the colorful Daleks a representation of c- current political climate? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it, it's it, subtle. Yeah. yeah, it was. It <laughs> was. Partially that, and also, which was a fun fact, is Clara, the version that you like, Christian, was actually the version of Clara that was supposed to continue on with Matt. But unfortunately, the you know the power to be said, no, you can't have that version of Clara. So that's the reason why she got killed off, and we had the common Clara. Oh yeah. Um, um, and uh, I, I, I thought I thought they were I thought, yeah. If, if that's true, that, that it was a political allegory. Awesome. I, I just thought there was pushback that people just didn't. Again, you know, there were the, the, the Tic Tacs, the Rainbow, the Power Ranger Daleks. I mean, <laughs> within 36 hours, there were so many memes. It was it was absurd. <laughs> I want to. I, I just want to do this for those uh, for our folks, just because um, for the uh, photo op. So, Melanie, can you lean left? Can you go to your the other way? I'm sorry, the other left. <laughs> Melanie, can you go left? You told I'm, her- sorry, I'm sorry, Mackenzie. Can you go? Can you go left? Can you go left? <laughs> Not too far, well, Melly. Get back in here. What? Where are you Patty, going? Can you go to the right? Can you go to the right? I, because we're going to do a little. We're going to do a screenshot. Hang on one second. Patty, can you go just a little to the right there? Because we're just going to do something a little fun. So here it is. Ready? One, two, 
three. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Just so you had them on out there. Wait, that's no, Carl that's, Whitman, no. If you're out there, please take a picture. There you go. There again. we go. No, so um, I hate to tell you this, but uh, that, that, that direction. <laughs> oh, Carl, on, Carl, Carl, before, just, <laughs> Carl left about four minutes ago. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Kevin. Well, thank you so much. Uh, uh, yeah, thank you. And he, he mentioned that we had a, he had, we had a great discussion. Well, thank you, folks. Don't forget again. Please go to galaxycon.com this Saturday. For those of you who are watching live, it's December twelfth, and it'll be at noon. You want to sign up, get in there, and make sure you go ahead. If you're going to purchase anything, get those early because I actually did uh, the Paul McGann one. I actually uh, signed up and got one, but you have to wait. If you wait too long, you will be waiting in line like a Disney attraction. Oh my <laughs> goodness! <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's a great photo. <laughs> and and this this was this was a send in uh, after I hosted a while ago. I was just like, hey, I printed this up. I was like, can you can you slide that in? And uh, should I uh, should I show the the Katie? Yeah, the audience okay. again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I don't see this, but um, I, I just want to mention not in your picture that oh, that is gorgeous. I hate you, I swear, I hate you, <laughs> David Warner. Uh, I think, uh, I want to thank Kevin Daniel for giving us a super sticker. <laughs> Never had that before, but thank you, Kevin. Thank you for joining us, and thank you all for joining us. Yeah, there you go. And uh, and, oh, oh, thank you, and, uh, yeah. Also yeah. And, and for your audience as well, <laughs> We're, it's not just uh, Doctor Who this weekend. On Friday, 6 yes. p.m., the cast of the video game Assassin's Creed. Uh, yeah. Saturday at noon, uh, Doctor Who with Jenna Coleman, Karen Gillan, Arthur Darville, and Matt Smith. At 4 o'clock, uh, several voice actors from the G.I. Joe cartoon. Mm. And we have a special weekend event. Uh, there's part two of the next day. I'll get to that at 6 p.m. Uh, Saturday. Modern Disney featuring Ashley Eckstein, the voice of Azoka Tano, and mm -hmm. Brett Iwin, who voices some character named uh, Mickey Somebody for Disney. Hmm. Uh, Maybe a mouse? Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Uh, Brett's wrote's really a lot of fun. Uh, I've hosted him before. I was actually by two. And at 8 p.m., classic Disney featuring Margaret Carey, the original model for Tinkerbell. She oh. was the one that was in the costume and she did everything Tinkerbell did. And the animators basically used her performance as the basis of the animated Tinkerbell as they did Very back cool. in the day. So she was. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh. Sorry, I, I, no. I was thinking a drunk. Oh. ridiculous. Well, that was yeah. December 12th. I could keep going for him. Uh, December 13th is the Adams Family Virtual oh. Experience. Um, yeah, the Adams Family yeah. Virtual Experience. Uh, there we go. <laughs> uh, featuring uh, featuring uh, offering senses, but uh, the, main, yeah, the main thing is it'll be, it'll be Christopher Lloyd and Christina Ricci for the Q&A. <laughs> cool. And uh, at 4 p.m., uh, G.I. Joe Part 2 featuring actors who played the Cobra characters from Cobra Command. And at 6 p.m., uh, Halo featuring Steve Downs, Master Chief himself, and Jen Taylor Cortarina. And there are also some other stuff that don't involve online stuff. We're doing uh, events with several actors, including Nichelle Nichols. We're doing private signings. Oh. So we have autographs available from uh, those actors as well. And I believe there are some mail-in options as well for your own stuff so like i said this is this is the machine yes or maybe this is the machine i don't know yes and that's just december i mean you keep going and i mean there's stuff already in january i mean lots of content so go make sure you go on to galaxycom at galaxycon.com or yeah. galaxycon live sign up, up. galaxycon.com okay yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm really really i'm really psyched for adam's family that's gonna be fun and just a couple of things before everybody leaves. Uh, we just come to the end of our show. If you want to, oh, thank you. Kim got you, man. I appreciate it. Well, we appreciate it. Every every little bit helps, especially uh, if you want to check out the merch shop, you can go to our Facebook page, facebook.com, The Traveling Tardis. Uh, if you are somebody who has a product like Mackenzie and want to advertise with us, either uh, email Sage or myself at hanging with show. That's H A N G I N with show.com. Uh, rates are reasonable and we are. We, you know, anybody who sponsors with us, we're going to help you out in, in the big way. Don't forget to go to our YouTube channel. Um, if you can't find us, the best way to do it is HWWS Media. You can pull us up, and there's a plethora, a plethora of shows on there. I've lost count. I've lost count of how many shows that we got out there. And uh, don't forget, all of you, have a safe and wonderful holiday season. 
please be careful out there because we want to see you in the next year. We're going to a convention, our first brick and mortar in quite some time, Central Florida is, Comic Con. Is, 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 this isn't your last one of the year. No, we, we haven't done the cons. We're going to our first brick and mortar con. Not, no, not no, online. Brick this and isn't mortar. your last show of the year, though, right? No, no, no. We no, we just keep right. going. At, yeah, I'm about to say, yeah. you're like, like, like oh, uh, have a safe and wonderful holiday season. And we'll no, see no, no, we just, year. no, yeah. we, 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 no. no okay, we're right, not that right. lucky. get to that. Uh, just <laughs> so people know the upcoming shows. Next week, we're going to have Benji Clifford, who is the sound engineer and works on with Nick Briggs on the Big Finish podcast. He's yeah. going to be our special guest next week. Following that uh, will be... Uh, Phantasmagoria. They're going to have a special Christmas special, and I think we're. I, I think I can lock this in. It's going to be narrated by Simon Fisher Becker, or at least he's going to start the show off with Gloria that. So. And we might even have more information about that. It's going to be really big because uh, something ambitious is happening, and I'm working in uh, working on the rings. Finally, we're going to have our last episode of the year, which will be actually our predictions for Revolution of the Daleks, and then uh, we are scheduled to come on. Uh, right after Revolution of the Daleks premieres on BBC America. We're going to be doing a live review of that. So we're going to have a busy month and we've got plenty of... Oh, God, why? <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Uh, to Patty, I don't... I don't, rem I don't remember what's happening here, but I'm no sucker. Sucker. <laughs> yeah, backstage, I had the green lollipop and I was just like, hey, Kryptonite lollipop! <laughs> And uh, and um, that's it, folks. Again, please stay safe out there. Also, check out the Facebook page because our friends who have made appearances on here, they have cameo accounts, just as met, uh, Patty mentioned. Simon Fisher, Becker, Russ Mullins, uh, Ian McNeese was just recently on here just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, they all have cameo co cameo accounts, Churchill. And uh, they, uh, if you want to help them out while they're trying to get things going with their, you know, trying to get out of the... Uh, the lockdown. I don't know even know what the lockdown. They said that they're not locking down celebrities right now. They're still they're going back to filming, but um, it's still and a slow going process. Back to filming, but it's very... still a slow process. Yeah. yeah, to get them going out there. Yeah, and and they're a little worried too about yeah, we have film stuff, but where are we going to show it? Exactly. Yeah. So. Yeah, you know they're like they're like doing. I I, I host a one actress. Yeah. So I won't name her name, but she was filming the next Jurassic Park movie, and it was just like I don't know what they're gonna do with it when we're done. But you know, yeah, that's that's a discussion for another day. Mm -hmm. But um, everybody, thank you for joining us. Uh, and this is the show end. If you want to stay after for the uh, after a party, please, uh, by all means, we'll be here for just a little bit longer. Again, thank you all for joining us. Have a great day. Stay safe. Wash your damn hands, as my friend uh, Brian K. Moore says, and um, that's my line. <laughs> really? <laughs> I'm doing that. I'm doing that from the very beginning. Bye, bye, everyone. Take care, and please keep washing those hands. And that's how we end the show. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done. <laughs> Bravo. I experimented. Yeah, I exp experimented with uh, one that was like, uh, keep, keep, spread the love because we've had enough of hate. But that was just that. It a, even though it seemed generic, it was just too political. And so I just said, yeah, keep washing the hands. That works. Wash your hands. Yeah. Wash your damn hands. Because it's not because it's yeah. not like saying wear a mask, which is divisive. And you know, <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> and for those you of you, mask, but stay away from me. And for those of you just joining us in the after party, uh, we've stopped the recording for the audio version of our show, but the video recording will stay on uh, just for a little extra for there. Um, I do want to thank Kevin Daniel. That I think is our first super chat <laughs> for yeah. super sticker. So thank you. Yeah, every little bit helps out out there. Um, I we got a merchandise about, job. He had one comment about the lollipop. So Kingdom Come. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we have a merchandise shop, uh, Patty. <laughs> I just, that, I, we, said, that's fine. I mean, I love stuff. Yeah, that, yeah. I mean, well, you got a great logo. You got a great intro and all that stuff. I mean, no, man, yeah. you got a you got a machine here. Mm -hmm. You got a really good machine. Um, on the twelfth is uh, Ashley Eckstein. She go, she's going to be there, right? Is that yes. Gone? Okay. Okay. Yeah, she'll be. I mean, her and Brett. Hillary, her and Brett will do a duo because they're like they're besties. So mm -hmm. they do a lot of events together, and then at eight o'clock, I've got the the classic Disney uh, uh, performers, um, which is eight o'clock is really late, but I think they're all on the West Coast or something, so it's like five o'clock for them. So, 
And you had uh, the Shat and uh, Mulgru. How did that go? The yeah. Capitans. That Capitans. was very interesting. Um, <laughs> now, Kate Mulgru. Yeah. She's a she's a she's a she's a very she's a very serious uh, person, and yes. I don't. That's that's not a criticism. It's just an observation. Um, she's she's not given to. Uh, She's not given to frivolity unless mm -hmm. she genuinely feels it at that moment. I, I would okay. say, so it 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 made it made the conversation uh, with with her and and, and Shatner. Um, it 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 got it got deep. It got. It was very. It was, it, I won't say serious, but. Um, it was a grown-up conversation between two people. And okay. the nice thing is that, that the response to some questions uh, went down some very interesting rabbit holes. And the really nice thing was there were a couple times where they had wildly very different philosophies of answers. And the nice thing yeah. is this is how they bounced between each other and without any sort of rancor, any sort of whatever. It was, it was nice to see people who disagree talking nicely and mm -hmm. and sharing their points and finding that middle ground stuff like that mm -hmm. and a, couple, <laughs> a couple times I'll, I'll jump on in and do it but uh yeah it was my first time with her and uh, i i found her to be absolutely pleasant um she seemed to she seemed to quite like me at the very beginning she was just, just like well patty you're 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 young and smart you know <laughs> so i was young so like, you're young and smart you need to come to uh, come to new york you know and i was like uh so you can let me crash your couch. Or whatever. <laughs> yeah, there's but, a lockdown uh, thing. I'm gonna have to spend a couple I'm weeks. Getting off my <laughs> but uh, I, 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 I look, I, I look forward to an opportunity to talk to her some more. I would, I would have loved to have had a one-on-one -on -one with her and really just go this way too. And, and like I said, that was my fifth time this year with William Shatner. Um, I, I like him very much. Uh, he enjoys me. Like I tell people, people, oh, you like besties? Like, no, no, no. It's, it's again, I always choose the, the metaphor that I'm like a server at a restaurant. And when it comes to the GalaxyCon restaurant, he's I, he's glad that I'm a server again because we can bounce off each other. I know how he likes his drinks. I know how he likes it, you know, and I, I keep it flowing along or two, you know, and thank you very much, Patty. Wonderful job again, you know, and yeah. So that's, yeah. Yeah. that's it. I'll, I'll, I'll take it. Yeah, the fact that William Shatner knows my name and is always glad to see me is I'm good. Uh, I, I, I'm good. Knowing that Captain Kirk, okay, is like that uh, too. And I will say that he's gotten the reputation for being what his reputation says he is. And I personally have never experienced that. I've never experienced any sort of whatever. And I've seen him off camera. I, I've seen him. He's on. And when he's off, he becomes a little bit more like the 89-year-old man that that he is. And um, I've, I've never seen this this tyrant that over the years that 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 we've heard about so again you know but i've never had to work with him on set i've never had to work yeah there's there's various mm -hmm. other things so that's that's all that's all i'll say and uh he is really remarkable in the uh the private chats he really is a good job of uh, you know it's having fun with people and so again <clears throat> take that up by the same token i had a wonderful time with walter king you know uh, with the babylon five people and uh you know walter Walter did that for me. So, ah, <clears throat> so yeah. So it's, it's, it, yeah, like I said, the, um, the, the start. To, and well, I will, I will, I will absolutely say this much too. Bill is very happy to just talk about things of the day and everything else. Um, he likes, uh, hey, Robert. Um, <clears throat> he'll, he'll talk about Star Trek, but he'd rather talk about the latest book he's reading. He's a voracious reader. He's an absolutely voracious reader. Oh, wow. uh, yes. Oh, wow. And all kinds of nonfiction stuff. And he really just absorbs it all. Bill's fascinated by the world and he is fascinated at learning. He loves, he loves to hear about things that he doesn't know about. And he likes to, to that that, you know, it's like, well, how does that work? How do you do this? How do you do that? You know? Um, yeah, he's got a wonderful curiosity. But he's uh, got the, the TV show it, unexplained on yes. uh, Yeah. But the is thing he still doing dressage or no? Uh, the horses, do you know? He's. He, he, I think he still does. Uh, I think he still does the. Is it dress, is dressage? Is the the one with the little the little cart thing, sort of the Ben Hur thing, but not without the spikes. Kind of. It's, it's very much very showy, where you you memorize a routine and it's very. Yeah. I, I, 
I, I know he I know he has his horses. He, wasn't. he has his horses. He loves his horses, and he has his dogs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he always picks it up. For the very very first time, I hosted him. I asked him about uh, his passion for horses, and he went in this nice little thing about it and how they're the creatures and the nobility of them and all that stuff. So mm -hmm. I wish I wish I could say, hey, you said it on YouTube, but eh. yeah. Well, it's, I, I, what the amazing part is, is that I watched this show called The Curse of Oak Island. Oh, yeah. A bunch of guys digging for, yes. you know, this, this, they've been doing it for years. And I'm like, how do you afford this? By the time that you <laughs> find the treasure, you probably expended it on trying to find the treasure. But uh, the one interesting thing was he showed up. Bill Shatner shows up. He's talking to the guys. I'm just like, what the hell are you doing here? <laughs> So I was just like, oh, okay, but I can I can see his fascination, especially uh, what was it? Because um, he had that TV show for a while with those strange couch where he would interview people. I think it was like the raw deal, raw, the raw nerve, the raw William nerve, Shatter's raw nerve. Where literally, it was like two seats side by side by side. So you were literally like like this was a person, and he yeah. would he would and go it was, on it into it. And it wasn't the act. It, it, it's kind of what the. The acting studio should be, <laughs> but it was just like he would he would he would go he would dig down, but it was just like not this. In yeah, the I, way. I, I will say this past weekend because it was the last one we're doing for the year. I did finally have the gumption to ask him. This was at the end of it. I was like, "Oh, Bill, hey, before you go, have a good holiday." All that stuff. All right, look, there's one question I'm dying to ask you, and it's so deep. It's so uh, just crazy. I didn't even want to do it on the air, but I, I kind of kind of throw this at you, and he's like, "Of course, Betty." It's like, "All right." In 1965, he did a couple of stints on What's My Line, and he was like, "Oh, <laughs> I was like, the game show," and and I was just saying, like, "Do you have any recollections of uh, of working with John Daly, the host?" Because I consider John Daly to be one of my heroes in terms of a moderator or a host of some kind. I love the way he spoke. I love the way he had this elite, he had this wonderfully effete elite way of speaking that never came off as snobby, mm. you know? And he was just, oh, I, I think in the context you are attempting to elicit uh, would not be closer to do. So that's four down and six to go, you know? And, uh, and, and he just said like, ah, Patty, I would love mm. to tell you a love story about Bennett Surf and all of them, but, uh, they flew me out Saturday on the red eye and they flew me out Sunday on the red eye back to LA. No. <laughs> oh, but he, but he told me a funny story about how my dressing room though, was uh, up five flights of uh, uh, circular stairs. I was like, what? Cause yeah, for some reason there's multiple stages, but all the dressing rooms were on the fifth floor. So you had to go up there and then come back down and. Oh, so. good Lord. That kind of like reminds me of, and this was like a decade ago. I had the awesome opportunity to fly out to Los Angeles and Las Vegas to be part of, and this is for people who watch soap operas. So if you don't watch soap operas, this is probably like me. So on the Young and Restless, I got to see the 25th anniversary, wedding anniversary of Melly Thomas Scott and her husband, Edward Scott. And we flew out and literally when we got there, there, I got about two hours of sleep that particular night because we had to be on the set of The Young and the Restless the next day. And so it was like, boom, boom, just crazy, crazy, craziness. Yeah. And then there was still a photo opportunity thing that Melody had to do. So it's like, I went everywhere with her as kind of like observing everything as the web designer. It was just like, wow, all this, all the times it just do, 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 do. And it was amazing just having that little bit of experience. I was like, Oh, I understand now how everything works. Like I had a better, I, I don't know. It seemed like I was able to just work, understand Hollywood better. <laughs> mm -hmm. We were, we were talking about Matt Smith and um, I never got into the stuff that I kind of wanted to talk about. And I felt really bad because I don't want to down Matt Smith, no, we're not. but it was his no. time after Dr. Who, <laughs> the moment <laughs> that he started to, flourish into movies and does anybody remember lost river at yes. all because i haven't even seen it yes i just I, remember I about it simply because it was filmed actually about an hour and a half where i worked from so i i don't know i know in detroit it was filmed in detroit but i don't know the exact area he had this photograph that he said thank you and i've been trying to figure out. i'm like i saw this bridge in the background and i have put it on my social media i was like where is this bridge in Detroit? Where is this? Because I wanted to go there and just like do a sign and just like reenact it. And 
course there was, I have not found figured out what it was, but Lost River is, uh, how do I put it? it? It's, it's not necessarily a bad movie, but it is a movie. Oh, that's glowing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is going to get glowing. Oh, this, is coming, this is coming from Mackenzie. This is coming from Mackenzie. Let me just put it this way. Let me, let me see if it fills in the blanks there. There were two things I remember about Lost River. One, Matt Smith bulked up for this movie because he yes. was supposed to be the bully, which yes. he's going from Doctor Who, this wonderful, nice guy, to a bully into yeah. a movie. He's bulking up. And not only that, but the first trailer I saw... The only thing about this trailer was look at my muscles, and he kept repeating it to the point of nausea. I'm like, this is not Matt's fault. This was his first movie out, and I was just like, oh boy. This and, seems to and be it, a it's ironic too because of the Pandora speech that we were talking about. That's actually the reason why he got that role. And Ryan, Ryan Reynolds saw that, and he must approach his agent and said, "Would you do it?" And of course. Matt wanted to do it, so he ended up shaving his hair. Right, so Ryan Gosling, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, 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 you're fine. I just, I <laughs> wanted to, it, was Ryan, it was directed by Ryan Gosling, and just he like. He also wrote it. Screenplay well, see, and direction just, by Ryan, Ryan Gosling. Reynolds now has to work with Matt in something, because now I've said it, so there we go. <laughs> it, it, was, it, wasn't, it wasn't that why he was like, He's ah, straight, I got bored. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's why right. he had to wear the wig, and yeah, yeah and I remember there being a picture, a, Around the same time, that he was part of Terminator, where he got all bulky and it was like oh, in the picture. <laughs> and that that was another movie that got me upset because they were boasting that, and especially when they were interviewing Arnold Schwarzenegger, they're going like, "Oh yes, Doctor Who will be in our movie," and it's very. And I was just like, they were boasting, and he's like, "What? Like he appears for five seconds in the beginning, and then five minutes at the end as a hologram projection." I'm like, "You really did this to Matt Smith." Well, the same thing happened with. Well, they were setting him up to be the big bad, right? If theoretically, they yeah. kept going on that timeline. Yeah, right. Yeah. They were. They were and, bad. It, it, and it's so frustrating. I have to say, as probably not. Well, I can not say probably, but it has to be frustrating as an actor knowing that you have this expectation and that it just doesn't happen. And it's just like they with like Terminator. He was supposed to have a much bigger role, but because the box office just did a dump, that never happened. Right. And then, well, <laughs> Bully is a, <laughs> his character. Bully, it, well, I have to say this way: I had an argument actually. I had a row with a friend who said Matt can never play a bad guy, be evil, because he, uh, they always pictured him as being the goofy and old doctor. And I said, no, he can do, he can do anything. He's really. done Charles Manson, so yeah, he can pull it yeah, off. he yeah. can do anything. Yeah. And so, so there but, ended up being the thing I remember the most about Lost River, and it is actually part of the reason why rats show up in the Rite of Wands, is there is a there's a character that he approaches and says, can I see your rat? And he has this knife, and he just, <laughs> just slices the rat. And it, just something, and I'm like, I turned around doesn't to my gel. I told you, see that? I told you. She's like, doesn't gel. Uh, but there was, um, there was a movie on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> I'm not giving this. Uh, I, 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 I saw the trailer right? and I didn't even want to watch mm. it. But, it's um, one of those movies where you'll watch it and you'll be like, what the b did I right. watch? Oh, <laughs> now the movie that the movie that got me and I I recommend this to everybody because I liked that oh, oh, Dirk, Dirk Benedict Dirk, Dirk Benedict, Benedict just, just wow. announced for uh January 2nd. So you heard it here first. Uh, uh, was that the movie? No, now I got to say this the movie that got me back on track with Matt Smith going into movies and The Crown is another Crown's story. Amazing. The, the Crown's another story. I'm just like, but the movie that got my back on track with Matt Smith, as far as movies are concerned, and I got to say this, and Patty's probably going to razz me on it. I like the stupid movies like uh, Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter. I <laughs> liked it. We, uh, well, it was to me, it wasn't bad. It was just I, 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 didn't, I didn't see it. I I heard about it. <laughs> it was well, I like I like the historical things, and I like it when people play around with the historical because you could tell that the person who wrote this knew about Abraham, knew about Stephen Douglas, knew about his wife. They just kind of remodified it so that it would work in this way. It oh, is I could see, Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. That's where I was heading to. Pride and okay. Prejudice and Zombies. I just if pulled you up his IMDb see a movie that he was just I think the best in. He when he played Parson, Parsons Collins, that is. The role because he is just you have this movie of gore and violence going on around him and 
He's just being this jerk. But I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it definitely it played there, off so well. There is a, there's a precedent, I think, um, among like former doctors to be all like, okay, you know, now go go and play a couple of bastards because people are, have seen you as, as this way too. I mean, you know, Tenet, Purple Man. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. as far as it do and uh yeah i think smith they did a couple times and leading on he was going to be gonna be the skynet the uber villain and that and whether it failed or not it was just him saying hey look i could do this too capaldi's gonna be you know the thinker in the next suicide squad movie mm-hmm. can't wait i want to see that just for, for him for however long he'll he'll be in it uh, <laughs> five yeah. minutes i i i know i've i've heard all kinds of interesting things about it uh i'll say this much it seems very evocative of the uh, x-force scene in uh, deadpool 2 mm. yeah. a lot of characters have two scenes one to introduce them and the next scene to kill them yeah <laughs> but that worked with brad pitt that was okay with brad pitt's character <laughs> Because everybody, that that was the whole reason. But uh, yeah, Pride pre- and Prejudice and Zombies. I just love this character. And he was kind of, it kind of did harken back a little bit to the 11th Doctor. But you could see he was going full on just being a dork. And then just having a good time with it. And, it, and, the, and the movie was kind of, I watched it because of that. Even though there was this gore and violence going on with the, with the main storyline. He was just like. He was the chauvinist. He was just, just on and on. I loved it. I think when, uh, uh, go on ahead the, uh, on the on on the old show we, we were on. I think it was uh, one of the panels we were doing live, and the eternal question of somebody. Well, why 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 can't uh, an older actor come back? Because of course everybody was just like, you know, David Tennant should come back, and it's like it doesn't it doesn't really work like that. Whatever. No. But I but. So I came up with uh, what would it do? And I remember it was Smith's with that one that, that I had to hear the inspiration. Okay, this this is how I would be all right for a doctor to come back and be the doctor. Same actor, completely different personality. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Completely mm-hmm. different mode of dress, completely different personality, completely the, the way to do it. And I was like, yes, that would be that. Yeah, yeah. That because what's the point if they're gonna come back and do the same thing and rehash the same thing? They need to be, have a different dynamic. Exactly. Might as well watch the old stuff. Exactly. And the thing with, with the, about Precious and Zombies, for his role, majority of his lines were actually ad-libbed, so they were not in the script. He had he had to do it all himself, so that gives you another element there. And then going with the whole thing about having a doctor come back, one of the things, and this is a rumor about 13, and I, I wish that this had happened, is that there was this rumor going around that Capaldi, at, during the regeneration, was going to split into two versions of the doctor, being a version of a good and a bad. And I would love to see that happen sometime. We're having a doctor have playing two different personalities of the doctor, whether that split is actually a doctor well, or Superman a- three. Yeah. <laughs> is it choking each other by the dumpster. I thought they, ha- well, they didn't, they have that with um, nightmare and silver. They kind of, well, they had Mr. Kind of, uh, kind of, yes. And Mr. I love, uh, another episode that clever. I love that I don't think that it gets enough recognition of it just because I, I, I love that because Matt has to play essentially two different personalities in the same scene. And it's just, it, it's fantastic the way it comes together. Well, unfortunately we're coming up to the end of the after broadcast party again, galaxycon.com. Please check out Patty Hawkins. Um, definitely want to sign up now. Want to get everything squared away. Want to sign links. up way before yeah. and get it taken care of. And as soon as you log in, get your question posted. Make sure you throw that question out there as soon as you can. Because and don't get buried. Don't spam it. Don't repeat it. Right. Uh, yeah. Just like, Hey, I would, I hear, here's my question and let it go because uh, they, they, they're the, the, the minders in, in the chat room are usually pretty easy going, but we've had a few, uh, we have a few ones where somebody was just like, tat, 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 and 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 for the first time, I know producers. I finally had to use first time you had to use the check button and kick them out. They were able to still watch the Q and A, but they were ejected from the chat room. Mm-hmm. And that's somebody else too, by the way. You don't have to go into the chat room. You can just watch it. It's an option to join in the chat room. And the nice thing mm-hmm. about the chat room too is that it's live. And when was the last time you got into an internet live internet chat room uh, about people that you share uh, a passion with and bouncing off of each other and stuff like that? And yeah, we've had people, 
hey, hit me up uh, on my Twitter here. Let's, uh, let's so, you know, it's, it almost harkens back to the old AOL days, you know, in the, uh, the chat room. Like and that. it's free. Mm-hmm. It's free yes. for the yes. chat room, for the cha- yes. uh, for the, to go in there, just to watch, just to see what's going on out there. Uh, okay, so Benji Clifford, Phantasmagoria. Also, uh, the 25 Days of Humus, or 25 Days of Christmas at the Legend of the Traveling Tardis. Uh, we put up some great pictures from classic and new uh, traveling TARDIS uh, recently put up the clips from K9 and Company. If anybody mm-hmm. remembers that, uh, some stuff. So you get a lot of good variety. It was Elizabeth yeah. Slayton. I remember everything with Elizabeth Slayton. <laughs> well, I remember that movie. Right, 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 <laughs> Robert show. Yeah. So, uh, so please join us again if you haven't. If you haven't signed up again, Facebook.com. The Traveling TARDIS. Thank you. For and, and this is where it gets weird, Patty, because Facebook has changed follow. everything. We now have forty three thousand ninety four people who like the page. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We right have yeah, but this is the number that people are telling me to follow. register. Forty three thousand seven hundred and one follow the page. Yes, we're, so technically we're closing on forty four thousand like in a weekend. So. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. I mean, really, thank you for supporting us. Thank you uh, for the super chats, which I was expecting. Thank you, Kevin, for that. And um, if you want to support us, we do have our merchandise shop 20% off. Um, And I can't thank you enough, guys. Please, again, please stay safe and have a happy holidays. Thank you again, Patty. Thank you for joining us. Melanie, Mackenzie, don't have to go home because we already air, but we can't stay here. (laughs) Wash your damn hands. So thank you, folks. We're going to end the broadcast now. Have a great day. Thank wash you. your hands and you wash your hands and use dental dams. <laughs>